Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and to my beloved, very cheap Copart Audi TT. And today, as you can see from the title, we're gonna be showing five things that I bet you didn't know about these Mark I TTs. Now, very quickly, if you didn't see my last video, which came out on Sunday, I took a very different type of Audi, completely the opposite end of the spectrum to Germany. It was an Audi RS Q8, 111 grand's worth, and I drove it there for the N24 endurance race around the Nürburgring. It was incredible. You should check out the video if you haven't already. And if you're one of my 75% of regular viewers that are not subscribed to the channel, I encourage you to do so now because the next video is all also going to feature an extremely special car. If you're one of the people that follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen what it is. And it might be, let's just say, well, it's a Range Rover. So the first thing on today's list that I bet you didn't know about the Mark 1 TT is that, well, you see them now all the time with the spoilers from factory. That's what the car came with. However, in the first model year, I think back in 99, there was a series of high-speed accidents and fatalities with these TTs, especially on places like the de-restricted German Autobahn, where at high speeds, they were going off the road because apparently they were very unstable. So there was a mass recall done on all of these TTs that had been produced up to that point, and they went back and had these spoilers put on, and then subsequently, the models that came out also had these spoilers. And as standard, the 3.2 litre V6 has an even bigger one, I guess, higher top speed, more downforce required. But actually, I didn't know that. I didn't know that until literally the other day, seeing a original Audi UK car that had no spoiler. And I questioned, why does mine have a spoiler? Well, there you go, that's why. Now, the second thing that I bet you didn't know about these Audi TTs, it's twofold, really. They did special editions of these cars. And I actually found this out by mistake when looking through Auto Trader. It's what you seem to do when you become obsessed with a particular model of car. You sort of look at all the other options available on Auto Trader, eBay Motors, wherever else you can find them. And what I came across was one that, well, had seats that looked like a baseball. And that's because they literally did a baseball edition car where the seats were the color of a baseball and they had very thick stitching akin to what you might find on a actual baseball, which is very funny. Not many of them around. I'm not sure the exact production numbers, but there weren't a lot. However, they did also do a sport edition and they didn't make very many of them. You can easily notice them by the black roof, but essentially what they did with these is they took the 1.8, the 225, and they upped it to 240 horsepower. They also managed to lose 50 kilograms via removing the rear seats. You could get Recaro bucket seats in there. There was a brace bar installed, but they also removed the spare wheel and the parcel shelf from the back. Another thing they did as well was move the battery to the back for better sort of balance. But they're quite rare, they're quite expensive now if you look at them online. Don't think you can get one for much less than 10K. I've certainly never seen one. But yeah, I didn't know until researching for this video that they made such a thing. Make sure you comment below whether you're looking at me going, shut up Joel, I knew all of these things. Or if you are learning something new from this video, do comment below and let me know. Moving inside the car then for the third, and I have to say my favorite thing on this list. Well, it's a sunny evening. I just drove over here now and I needed my sun visor down. Of course, there's one on the passenger side as well if you ever feel the need to put that down for a bit of extra protection. But what you may not know, and I'm counting on the fact that you don't hear, is there's actually a third one. It's right here. Now, the only other place I've ever seen one of these is on a 955 or first generation Porsche Cayenne. And I thought it was quirky on that, but then it was an SUV, so it kind of made sense. I mean, Range Rovers have two visors on each side, but not on this dinky Audi TT, surely. But no, it does have a third and tiny sun visor. It's exactly the same size, more or less, as one of those 15 centimeter rulers you used to have at school. But what it does is blocks the light for that sort of distance between the top of the rear view mirror and this bit of glass above it. I can't really see the point. I don't know why they put it in, but it's attention to detail, isn't it? And I think those sorts of attention to detail points are the reason we love these Mark I TTs. Moving into the back of the TT then, which is something I don't ever recommend doing if you're a grown adult like me, we're gonna show you the fourth point on the list. So point number four is not actually the fact that you would have to decapitate yourself to sit back here. Actually, I've never, why on earth did they put rear seats? This is, this is worse than, it's worse than a Porsche 911. It's awful. Anyway, the point back here, and 
it's pretty pointless really because I don't think you'd ever use them but it's hidden storage on the sides here here and here we have these two little plastic compartments which reveal pretty deep pockets um, you could fit sort of a one litre water bottle in there now this one has a first aid symbol and I think that might have originally housed the first aid kit but this one's empty and carpeted and you could get you know you could put a phone in there your wallet quite a few things maybe it's a pretty good place if you're leaving I don't know anything high value or snatchable in the car this would be a really cool little place to hide them but by the off chance you have an amputee friend or maybe just very young children and they're in the back and they need to store their iPhones <laughs> and they've got somewhere to do it it's a bit of a far-fetched one this but something you may not have known about now the fifth and final thing I dare say that you didn't know about with these Audi TTs is one you're going to kick yourself for if you didn't because once you know about it it's painfully obvious and it's all over the car as well when the designers at Audi came up with the TT of course they designed it to be beautiful pretty and different to anything before but they also wanted it to have a uniform and hints of design language throughout the car starting with the petrol filler cap you'll notice that there's these seven holes around the circumference of it and this isn't the only place you'll see that they're on the wheels they're on the door handles twice because there's one here as well you can see them also around the audi badge on the steering wheel they're around the gear lever housing and around the actual knob itself they're on all of the air vents and they even carry through to the heated seat switches and the air conditioning switches with the holes around the outside another place i bet you hadn't spotted them was on the center of the needles on the instrument cluster there 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 on every single needle we have the same holes around the circumference and i think that just about does it there may even be more of those that i've missed to be totally honest with you but i think that fifth and final point really sums up the charm of these cars so much thought and attention to detail was put into these and i think that's why they've aged tremendously well they're a unique design and they're not trying to be anything they're not so i hope you found that video helpful do comment below if you've learned anything if I'm a complete moron and you knew absolutely everything, I'm sorry, I probably look completely naive. But by the off chance there is one of you out there that didn't know one of the things I talked about, then for me this video is very much worth making. Now, if you're still watching now and you didn't subscribe at the start of the video and you're still not subscribed, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. As I mentioned, the next video coming on the channel is featuring well, a brand new Range Rover, which I cannot wait to show you. And then after that, there's going to be more Audi TT content. And if you're still following it, some stuff with my S-Type Jack too. So make sure you don't miss any of that by subscribing to the channel. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all very, very soon.